I have a hunch. It's not all about UFOs, Bigfoot, and fake moon landings. Some conspiracies even penetrate the world of food and beverage. Here are 10 shocking food theories too crazy to believe. The New Coke Conspiracy. How do you even drink that? Because it's delicious. Here's a crazy story about a marketing gimmick so bad, it actually turned out good, and therefore was maybe no accident after all. For over 100 years, one rivalry has transcended the soda industry, Coke versus Pepsi. While Coke was typically the bigger seller, Pepsi finally made up some ground. In 1975, Pepsi started doing blind taste tests that they dubbed the Pepsi Challenge, letting blindfolded customers choose which of the two soft drinks they preferred. The challenge was a landslide victory for Pepsi. Coke panicked and made immediate changes to its 90-year-old recipe, apparently to make it taste more like Pepsi. The result was a soda called New Coke, and it was released nationwide in 1985. Coca-Cola was so confident it would be a massive success, they even shut down production of the original formula altogether. Instead, it was a disaster. Less than three months after it was introduced, New Coke production was cut back and the original recipe Coke, redubbed Coca-Cola Classic, was brought back and sales boomed once again. That's, yeah, that's a good idea, dump it. Classic Coke almost immediately began outselling New Coke and was back to its former glory by the spring of 1986. Because the rollout went so incredibly poorly and lasted so shortly, rumors have long swirled about that the whole thing was purposely cooked up as a way of making people miss the original product. After all, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Folks were also dubious of a multi-million dollar international corporation being capable of making such a huge mistake after all of its years of success. Each of these conspiracy theories has been debunked, and Coke's own former chairman of the board laid it to rest, saying, quote, Some critics will say Coca-Cola made a marketing mistake, and some cynics will say that we planned the whole thing. The truth is, we're not that dumb, and we're not that smart. McDonald's milkshakes don't have any milk. I drink your milkshake. This one springs from a naming technicality since McDee's simply calls them shakes. And no, that's not shorthand for milkshakes, it's their technical and official title. This is due to a complex system of dairy regulations from 1924 called the Pasteurized Milk Ordinance, which regulates milk and milk products across the USA. However, some states haven't adopted the system and have some pretty tricky definitions of what constitutes a milk product. I want milk. So some state dairy laws will play a hand in what is or isn't classified as dairy. Everything from sour cream to sherbet to frozen yogurt may or may not go by their traditional names. So to simplify things, McDonald's just drops the milk name entirely, even if there's still technically milk-based reduced fat soft serve in a non-milkshake shake. Chinese food makes you sick. I ordered Chinese food. Does Chinese food really make you sick? That reasoning seems to persist despite evidence to the contrary, and the culprit for this conspiracy goes by the acronym MSG. Known technically as monosodium glutamate, this flavor explosion has been under public scrutiny since the 1960s, but has a history of widespread usage stretching back to the turn of the last century. A Japanese chemist named Kikunai Ikeda first discovered MSG in 1907. By the time the 1950s rolled around, MSG was a big deal in America, being used in restaurants, store-bought foods, and in home kitchens. Almost anything on the supermarket shelf that came in a box, bag, or can contained MSG, from potato chips to baby food. That all came crashing down in 1968, however, with a letter published in the New England Journal of Medicine that featured a doctor complaining about suffering strange symptoms after eating Chinese food, and his theory randomly accused MSG. Ever since, the idea has persisted without evidence. You have no proof. 
Even today, Whole Foods has a list of ingredients that it doesn't allow in the food it carries. And next to perfectly acceptable ones like high fructose corn syrup is MSG. This even though the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has always approved MSG as fit for human consumption. In the FDA's own words, natural glutamate and MSG glutamate are chemically indistinguishable. If the theory were true, you'd be getting sick from eating everything else that included MSG, which is a lot of stuff. So if you feel weird after Chinese food, it has nothing to do with MSG and is more likely due to our habit of having one too many helpings of chow mein. Fluoride in water will brainwash you. They're, they all look so good. How about the axe murderer brainwash? Although fluoride has been present in public water systems for three quarters of a century and is essential for fighting tooth decay, some stories have convinced people to steer clear of their tap water. Conspiracy theories against adding fluoride to water seems to center around fluoride as a mind control chemical that can brainwash anyone who drinks it into a communist. This persists because fluoridation in tap water was first used in the USA in 1945, as anti-communist sentiments grew after the end of World War II. Grand Rapids, Michigan got the first dosage into their tap water to test if it would decrease tooth decay in school kids. The study that was supposed to last 15 years ended four years early because it was so successful, dropping cavity rates in kids by 60%. And today, almost 75% of the country receives fluoride-boosted water in their taps. Chrissy? Give me a shtickle of fluoride. As a natural mineral, if fluoride was actually controlling your brain waves, you'd be doing the zombie walk from all the foods it already occurs in naturally, like white rice, spinach, carrots, shellfish, including shrimp, blue crab, and oysters, and produce like potatoes and grapes. Fluoride should have you smiling more, but because of your healthy teeth, and not because you've been brainwashed into an obedient drone. First time here? Well, it only takes a second to hit that subscribe button. Just saying. Thanks. McDonald's doesn't use real beef. Ooh. That's not a real cow. <laughs> Pink slime processed patties aren't the only conspiracy theories surrounding McDonald's beefy burgers. Another wild one was an urban legend of worm meat being used as a filler that's usually spread through whispers on school playgrounds. Others suggest that McD's burger meat is purchased in bulk orders from a South American conglomerate called 100% Beef. Oh, that's the good stuff which is why it was advertised as such so often. The theory states it was a trick to hide low-grade filler in the patties, but still makes a claim to customers that the burgers were, in fact, 100% real beef. While the Golden Arches stopped counting their total burger sales in the mid-1990s, which is why the signs changed to billions and billions served, from old slogans like over 99 billion served, the company estimated in 2016 that it has slung over 300 billion burgers since its started. If there was something weird going on, somebody would have noticed after that many Big Macs. KFC and genetically modified chicken. But I'm not helping him. Helping who? The giant chicken! McD's isn't the only fast food giant to have urban legends about its meat floating around. This theory sprung up back in 1991, the year Colonel Sanders' famous Kentucky Fried Chicken officially shortened their name to three letters, KFC. Conspiracy theorists will tell you the swap was due to a legal issue because KFC didn't actually sell chicken at all. The legend spread on the basis that KFC sold so much meat they needed to raise genetically modified and mutated over sized birds without all those pesky feathers, feet, and beaks that they don't make money from. Of course, the real reasoning is much more simple in that the company wanted to exclude the word fried from its image for health-conscious reasons, and they wanted a shorter name that most people were already using anyway. Bubblegum takes seven years to digest. You made me swallow my gum. Just because gum stuck to the bottom of a restaurant table will stay there for a long time doesn't mean it does the same if you accidentally swallow it. Everyone's heard the tale of swallowed wads of chewing gum being stuck in your stomach lining because of the resilient, chewable qualities making it too strong for stomach acids to break down. But that theory bursts quicker than a bubble. Gum has the same indigestible base as certain foods, like seeds and nuts, as well as corn kernels. But even though it doesn't get broken down by stomach acid, it still gets flushed out like everything else. 
Dr. Pepper's main ingredient is prune juice. It's an earth drink. Prune juice. Famously marketed as having a combination of 23 flavors in one soda, this rumor has long suggested the major flavor in Dr. Pepper is good old-fashioned prune juice. The company has denied the theory for nearly a century, but it still persists because the actual secret list of 23 flavors has never been released to the public. Nobody knows exactly when or why the delicious Dr. P started being compared to Grandma's favorite laxative, but that's also a mystery since Dr. Pepper doesn't even taste like prune juice to begin with. Like most of these food theories, it's likely done for a laugh instead of being grounded in any reality at all. And anyone who dreams them up might need to see a doctor of their own. Sugar versus Aspartame Give me some sugar, bro! Here's a story that stretches back to the early days of the internet, where it turns out, much like today, the information superhighway was always a hotbed of misinformation. This one centers around Aspartame, known commercially under names like Equal and NutraSweet. In the wake of widespread diabetes and the dangers of sugar consumption becoming more prevalent, this artificial sweetener is a whopping 200 times sweeter than sucrose and is used as a substitute under the classic diet label in almost anything that you'd find refined sugar in. Must protect sugar. It was first approved for use as a food ingredient in 1974, before getting full FDA approval for use across the board in 1981. Some folks have always been wary of its artificial and chemical nature, as well as the admittedly funky aftertaste. But a cancerous conspiracy around aspartame really kicked up in the mid-1990s. This is thanks to a letter spread by the ancient practice of chainmail forwarding, supposedly written by a lady named Nancy Markle, who never existed, who claimed to have lectured at a World Environmental Conference that also never existed. The letter had all the classic hallmarks of internet fear-mongering we still see today, from poor punctuation and random usage of all caps to pseudoscientific babble with no verified citations or sources. And for some reason, they had it out for aspartame. The conspiracy had claimed aspartame is responsible for all kinds of conditions like headaches, panic attacks, hallucinations, ADHD, multiple sclerosis, lupus, and cancer. These ideas persist in some circles, although there's never been concrete evidence. Aspartame is considered safe by not just the FDA here at home, but by over 100 food safety agencies worldwide. If anything, it has serious benefits in its original role as a replacement for sugars. As recently as 2017, studies still showed that it reduces body weight and caloric intake in both kids and adults. And unlike sugar, it does not affect insulin or cholesterol levels. The aspartame conspiracy still holds up as one of the internet's longest standing hoaxes, and it grabbed hold without using poorly lit YouTube videos or do-your-own-research Facebook pages. We recommend everyone just grab a diet soda and stick to using the internet for funny cat videos. Dive into more great videos. Just tap or click. Oh, and hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.